Hey guys, good morning. My name is Sam. This is my colleague Janice. Hi. And on today's live stream, we're going to build a PC. All right, first things first, let's go over the hardware we have here. Uh, we have, of course, the Gigabyte G7 motherboard. It's a great mid range board for all you gamers out there. We have uh, an Intel 6th gen CPU, it's a Core i5. We have uh, some G Skill Trident Z RAM, a trusty Coolmaster cooler a gigabyte uh, 1000 watt modular PSU, a gigabyte uh, G1 970 graphics card, and of course, a trusty DVD-ROM drive. All right, Janice, what's yep. first? The first step, we will put the CPU, a memory, and a cooler on the motherboard. Okay, great. Now, with the CPU, you have to be very, very careful. It's, it's quite fragile. So, um, you open up the lever first, and place the chip onto the socket. Now you'll notice that there's a small arrow on the bottom of the CPU. Align that with the socket. You know, if it won't go in the socket, don't force it in or else you might break it. Okay, next up is our thermal paste. So put a tiny bit of that on the CPU and this helps the heat from the CPU uh, be absorbed by the cooler. Okay, now, once that's done, you can place the cooler onto the motherboard. Make sure you line up the uh, holes and give that a screw in. All right, so once that is connected to the motherboard, um, there's one more step, and that is making sure the fan has power. So motherboards come with a special power port for that on the right. On our case, it's beside the uh, RAM sockets, and that makes sure you have power to your fan so it spins. So we're using DDR4 memory. DDR4 is the latest gen spec for memory. Uh, it has a lot faster clock speed than DDR3. And so when you uh, install the memory, you have to make sure to use the right socket. So you'll notice that our sockets, they are red and black. If you plug your RAM into the red socket, make sure you also plug it into the next red socket. Now this here is a modular power supply. Uh, so when we say modular, that means it doesn't have, it has all these plugs in the back, right? So you only have to plug in what you need. On a non-modular PSU, you'll have all these cables. The problem is, if you don't need all the cables, uh, you have extra cables which might impact airflow. So that slides in nicely down there. And once that is lined up, uh, you have to screw it in. Once that's plugged in, uh, we can plug in all of the cords to the back of the PSU. Now again, with a modular uh, PSU, you only have to plug in the cords you need. Our case comes with a nice back I.O. panel. Uh, can I see that for a second? Uh, this panel shows you uh, all the ports, what they are. So, you know, your microphone and speaker, you know, uh, ports are the same. Not are the same, they look the same. Uh, but with this uh, I.O. port, I.O. shield in the back, you'll, you know, you will know what's what. Because if you plug your speakers into the microphone port, it won't work. Now, it also has LEDs on the back of it. So if you have a low light scenario, you can see uh, what's your ethernet, what's your USB, you know, so on and so forth. So it's much uh, easier on the eyes. It's time now to make sure we have all of our standoffs uh, on in the case. Uh, these standoffs are small copper um, things that'll make sure that your motherboard does not come in contact with the case because if you do have a connection between the case and the board, you have a short circuit, which would definitely damage parts of your um, computer. You'll notice that on this case we have numbers below all of these standoffs. Okay, these numbers line up with this chart right here. We can't probably see it, but it's a chart on the case that shows us, you know, if we use uh, certain uh, motherboard sizes where we have to align it. So there's different sizes of different boards, and we want to make sure that we have the standoffs in the right place because not every board is the same. Okay, now it's time to mount the board. 
So this part, you have to be very careful because this board's of course fragile. You wanna make sure that it's all lined up with the standoffs. So there are a number of uh, holes along here. Uh, make sure you have them all screwed in tightly. Okay, yeah, so um, with the power, there's a number of power ports along the board. And so the, the first is right uh, beside the RAM. That's our main connector, and you can put it in gently, and once it's connected, you hear a nice click. All right, so we're going to now install the second connector, and beside that is a small connector that will power the LED lights on the, the back I.O. panel. Okay, so this part of the build can be the most frustrating. Thankfully, Gigabyte has a solution for you guys called the G-Connector. The G-Connector has all of the uh, labels for the these uh, cords, which power things like the reset switch, the power switch, so on and so forth. You can simply connect all of the cables to the G-Connector, and you will be uh, in business. It's a lot easier than doing it one by one. We're using, for this build, an Intel 750 series SSD, and also a Western Digital one terabyte blue series hard drive. Now with WD they have different different lineups and different colors for all the drives and the blue drive is more for uh, desktop and mainstream use. Exactly, so in our case um, it comes with a nice uh, space that for all the drives. Uh, so in this case we do have these mounts on the drives on the side and so they will screw into the, the, the drive and you pop it in there and you hear a nice click and you'll know it's securely uh, in the case. Let's now connect the cables to the drives. So we have there the data cable and also the power cable. However, there's also a new protocol. It's called M.2 and so that's a, a newer protocol uh, to use and so if you, if you want to connect that to your board you have to use a M.2 to U.2 adapter, uh, which as we'll show you guys, we have one on our board. So typically hard drives are higher capacity and they're cheaper. Uh, SSDs use NAND memory, like you have on your phone to store data. So SSDs, they're a lot faster, but they have a lower capacity and they're more expensive as well. So on our system, we have an SSD and hard drive as well. So that way you can put things like your games on the SSD and it will improve your speed in the games and have things like your movies, uh, pictures, and other documents on the hard drive. Yes, okay, so it's time to install the VGA card. Okay, now, here's a, here's a thing. Uh, you can't just install the VGA card in any PCIe slot. If you look closely onto the board, each PCIe slot actually has a number by it. That number, in this case we have X16 and so on and so forth, it, or X8 and X4, you know, it shows what is available for PCIe lanes. So you want to make sure that your graphics card is on the highest uh, slot possible to have the most amount of lanes available and that way you have the most amount of bandwidth to your card. So in this case, we're gonna use this guy right here, which is our trusty X16 PCIe slot. Yeah, so VGA cards, they need power themselves. Um, so we do have, as you can see, a power connector onto that uh, we have to connect the power cables to. All right, so you can see we're done. All right, so that was fairly easy to build the system. But there's one more step. That step is making sure it boots. Okay, so we are in the BIOS right now, you know, which shows uh, that we have a working PC. So Janice, wasn't that easy? It's very easy. Very easy, yeah. right? So this took us under an hour uh, which is not much time at all. And, you know, before we built this, we had all these parts just, you know, on, on the table. So it was really easy to build.